I started this company two years ago uh, to make use of the underground portfolio of space in London, uh, specifically using the disused underground stations as flagship sites. This is the remains of the old Brompton Road underground station, or subway station, built in 1812. This is the oldest underground station in London. My background is 15 years in banking across Europe, uh, Switzerland, London, Canary Wharf and the city, um, working anywhere from the trade for floor to looking after the chief uh, execs of some of the biggest banks in the world. My team has set it up to open these disused stations and make them into uh, venues, tourist adventures um, and different businesses will have the opportunity to, to come into sites like this. I came up with this idea thinking that, that there wasn't much more to, to go out on an adventure in London. You go to the same places, you do the same things, and a lot of people try and escape London, but actually there's a lot more inside London or under London as we're experiencing at the moment. Well, I've made it very specifically around an equity fund, so each site has three different businesses that go into, into the site um, that should make the site survive the first years of operating business. Um, restaurants, venues, but mainly it's keeping uh, the tourist attraction side of the sites and the historic value of these sites alive um, by using the, the first and second business streams to supplement the income. So timescale wise, uh, the Ministry of Defence and myself are building the first site to open in May um, as a complete operational proof of concept, slightly different from a pilot because we don't need to see whether it can work, we're going to make it work and operationally in a revenue sense. And the next six stations become a lot more uh, volume based, so bars, restaurants, that, that kind of thing, rather than completely historic. Um, and then we've identified in total 26 underground spaces as well as stations. We've got a, a wall over there which is the financial wall and the methodology and the red 10 million over there is the pledge from our first investor after four days. The, the original paperwork that I sent to the Mayor's office shows the structure um, of three businesses that will support each, each other. And basically I've made it so that not only will they support um, the, the uh, the station or the site itself as it's operational but business one will fund business two coming in which will fund business three and the wall just over there is the political wall with all the different different political stakeholders in the uk that are of benefit to projects and new business essentially this wall on the right is shows uh, timelines of discussion. So those lines will show how long it takes for different people to get back to you and respond to you. Um, if they constantly cross over, you can really tell whether two people know each other, especially politicians. Um, some ob objectives on that wall and some wins and successes as well. So it's sort of an inspirational wall, that one. Behind me is the card wall, very magical, very strange. That all of these cards at some point are hugely useful. It's very important that I can see these when I'm talking on the phone. As you look down to the right-hand side of the card wall, these are all the meetings that I've had in pers personal relationships that I've built up and spent time finding out what parts of what they do or their personality they can deliver to this project that is um, essentially delivering revenue to London. Don't let risk stop you doing things. Risk is why it's a winner. So um, essentially what that sentence says is, don't stop doing something because it could have a bad output, but uh, we're looking for it to have a good output. Let's take that risk that we're going to win it. Um, the other wall over there is quotes from MPs and politicians, uh, the state of the UK economy and the Financial Times, which fits exactly in to the build of this project and the timescales. When you say risk takers, I don't really agree with that term because with planning there is no risk. Well, there's a risk of winning, that's it. Um, I do a lot of uh, single-seater driving and karting and I always sit there and I change um, fear into excitement. So you sit there quietly and think about it for a while and you realise that as much as you push yourself 
the world around you will be able to cope with it. So uh, you have to feel like you're risking things, but in reality, it only appears to other people that it's a risk. Um, it'd be more of a risk if we didn't do this kind of stuff. I say about business that you have to plan as much as you can and prepare and research and spend hours, and I have spent hours till five in the morning for the last two years sitting just here. Um, and the last 20% is very much luck and fate and things that happen because you've prepared yourself to be in the right place at the right time. I have a very good team. Um, I say that they're significantly better than any other teams that I've met and I take them to, to different things to show them how easy it is to be the best um, but how much more enjoyable it is to be significantly better. Uh, the key in core is, is not to bring anyone on board um, that doesn't have the same mindset as you and try and fund it and finance it completely yourself until uh, you can find a proper investor that will take that product further. Sorting out operational problems um, in the city uh, is what my little team is very good at because as I say we do it in minutes, hours and days not emails and weeks and months so um, we're going to be hungry for the next one when this is finished. So yeah, the public reaction. Um, crazy, it can't happen, etc, etc. They're now coming around to it and I'm saying come on board, this is your product, this is your London, if you want to help, come and do it. So the, uh, they've changed, they've changed over time by seeing that we're not stopping and we're not giving up at any cost. In, in reality, this is a, a whole learning curve. Um, if I'd worked flat out, and I mean not sleeping, and I have sat here straight through the night, got very fit beforehand, I probably could have got this done in two months. Not the political side, um, but the learning curves of the meetings, um, the presentation to different people, um, how to structure things, who to get on board at the right stages, all of that sort of stuff. Um, I would have done it differently, but I couldn't have without the experience that I've got from this one. That's why it's very important to have done a, a huge project first rather than a successful financial one first in my book. You know, one of the things that I found interesting is that he said if, if he had not slept, you know, and worked all the way, yeah. he would have done the planning at least of the project in, in two, two months. Two months, that's right. I think he has a, has a banking background, so um, I think he must be saying that he's quite used to working very long hours and getting a deal done together. Uh, I guess from, from a background in banking also, I see what he's trying to say, which is um, his job is not to construct the site, his mm -hmm. job is not to build the bars, build the restaurants, his job is purely to find the financing. The primary skill that you need is probably selling. Because if you can't sell your product, you can't communicate your idea to someone, you can't sell your product to an investor that invests, then the whole project dies. And I think from watching the video, he's e extremely confident, extremely um, enthusiastic about his idea, and extremely uh, sort of pumped and ready to go, um, you know, ready to, to make it happen. So I think he, you know, in my opinion, he has the right characteristics uh, to, make, to make this vision work.